and then this is advanced care comes and these are just the votes tria that you can pick up early on now one of the other things that is kind of neat is now you can attach uh, a 20x and look at the tear film and so a normal tear film has a lipid layer it doesn't have a whole lot of debris in it it's got an aqueous layer and what you can do is see as they start getting drier you start seeing more and more protonaceous debris epithelial cells that are starting to desquamate and so as they get severe you basically see a lot of epithelial cells desquamated into the tear film so we can see these transitions from normal to intermediate to severe and kind of diagnose people where they're at based on the cell type and we can also look at post LASIK look at their their a normal eye versus something that's staining all over the board and follow them diagnostically as well as through, I don't know whether you're treating with, with a tear product or whether you're treating them with restasis. So we can look at protonaceous debris as well as the lipid layer breakdown. So this person has a lot of soap in their, in their tear film, kind of that soapy blepharitis look. We can look at conjunctivities and a lot of times we'll pick up, this is a giant cell, um, and we can look at the different cell types. Here's an eosinophil and, and allergic conjunctivitis. So it's just a way that's non-contact to look at the tear film itself. We're now with the Z-ring. Uh, the accuracy has gotten down to the two to five micron range. So we're able to attach that and look at how thick a flap is. So we can tell whether the flap's actually 95 or whether it's 100 with a lot more accuracy than we could uh, say with any of the other analysis that we had. If somebody hasn't measured the post you know residual bed post lasik residual bed i can now with pretty good accuracy tell you where their their flap interface is thank you refractive lenses i use it to uh, look at endothelial cell counts preoperatively so you know we get endothelial cell counts we then look at them postoperatively over the course of time and follow their endothelial cell morphology so you can actually look at the morphology and analyze the endothelial cells themselves so more and more, it's no longer got the academic title. We're seeing it in mainstream practices. Uh, the contact, the two, 20x contact lens allows us to measure and look at the tear film. The Z-ring allows us into the two to five micron range, and, and the diagnostic applications are huge. Now, this is one of my favorite things, and I just was playing with it over here, and I tell you to go play with it. I think it's a neat little device. It's called the Orion, and it's Orion. It's on sale. I can buy an Orion. Okay, just checking. I, I just didn't want to oversell the thing, but it, it, if it's not quite in a theater near you next, it's coming real soon. And, and this is literally a device that's a robotic. And we all know that Nidex can take pictures. I mean, Nidex got some of the best cameras to take fundus photography. So what the concept with this was, what if you had a satellite clinic? What if you wanted to do a screening day? What if um, you didn't want to go in a prison system and you wanted to do screenings in the prison system? The whole idea was to be able to take a quick robotic fundus picture and there's a little lady that says put your eye in the look straight ahead look left look right blink look up look down and it'll acquire an image and what they're now talking about doing is is being able to just inquire nerve images you could diagnostically follow glaucoma they'll do morphology studies if you want to send it to a referring physician they now have e navis where you can just download it say you know i think this person has glaucoma or I think this person has a normal disc, or I think this person has macular degeneration, or I think this guy's got diabetic retinopathy. And, and you don't have to have a, a technician. I mean, you're not going to have someone to carry the machine wherever it's going, but the technician just stands there and enters the patient data, and that's it. So it's all free-flowing and easy to do. And now with an e-navis, you can take the images and email them to a retina doctor, or you could email them to... If you're the retina doctor to the referring physician, uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can play with this and screen for macular pathology. You can screen for optic nerve pathology. And I think this is going to be a real neat future um, for, for this, this uh, Orion system. But uh, um, with that, I'm going to stop. And it's a real small group. So, I mean, tell me what you guys have in your practice and what you're using now. OPD, and you use it for your screening tool or what? Right, and you're using it to pick your lenses and all that sort of stuff. 
I think pretty soon they're going to marry the two together with some type of IOL machine, so you're going to be able to ultimately take a picture. It's going to give you your OPD station type modality, but it's also going to give you axial length. It's also going to give you um, white to white. It's also going to give you anterior corneal chamber depth. It's also going to give you lens thickness, those kind of things. And, and you're using what now in your clinic? The Magellan. And I, I like the Magellan because it's a nice introductory topographer. So if people look at me and they say, I can't buy an OPD, what do I tell them to do is buy a Magellan. And, and I think it's probably one of the most sensitive items to use. And I get maps that are sent to me all the time that say, okay, what's this map look like and do you think it's, it's real or do you think it's, it's a uh, um, um, normal cornea? And I think it's very sensitive. I love the neural net. As you guys know, neural nets, you can always get better and better and better. And so I think it, with the neural net system, we're just going to continue to put data into that, and we continue to do that. Yes? Yeah, we were talking about this a second ago. I think with the, with the remote screening, I think that, that, you know, whether you put them, you know, potentially you could put them in an optometrist's office, okay? They could take pictures for the day of all their patients and then send you all that by eNavis, and, and the little girl Friday comes back, with the computer or without it, but it's in your computer. It's in your computer at home, and you're going to be able to, to read. Um, and all they're going to do is send these little Orions around to different sites and say, okay, well, I need Miss Johnson to come in. Uh, I don't need Mr. You know Jones to come in. Mrs. Smith's got you know diabetic retinopathy that's progressed because you're going to be able to show that. And and I think that as a screening tool, it's going to be phenomenal. I, I think of I don't know church fairs you know, where you can stick it, the system out there. And, and by doing a screening, you're not diagnosing. So the person that's actually screening them is not diagnosing it. And so I don't think the liability issue is going to be there as if somebody were doing a tono pin. Well, I do. What we do is, well, we'll, I mean, just to give you, for example, the, you know, the NASCAR boys, and we're, we're in North Carolina where I grow up, and so they do a lot of racing. And so in, in, in NASCAR, what they do is they will say, okay, you can come over to my shop. And, and they, I can't tell you when people are going to come, but they're going to, they're going to, we're going to put you up in one of the rooms. And so we take an OPD over there, and we take a tono pen and uh, a pachymeter and we screen them and we say okay you're a good candidate or you're not you need to come in this is what it costs this is what the process is this is what i think you should get lasik or prk and then we go home now if you could throw this in there too i mean and then let your retina doctor or somebody else look at it and say well you know that guy's got sig clinically significant macular edema or that guy's got you know um you know macular degeneration i need to see him i think it's i think it's, it's a it's a great option. We, we have 294 optometrists that refer in. I would love to take the Orion and just, and just put it there on Monday, the next guy gets it on Tuesday, the next guy gets it on Wednesday, the next guy gets it on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, but, well, you know, the robotics have been a little bit of an issue, and I'm not going to kid you on that. But the new one, I just went over and used it. It's pretty doggone good because some of the little old ladies with, with the one that I've got right now, you know, they kind of get their head and their sideways and they don't get it. So you have to coach them a little bit. But the new one, I tell you, try it. I think that's pretty quick and slick. Yeah, it works real well. And, and what I would say, uh, you can screen for whatever you want. You can do nerve and macula. We just did nerve only. Um, you could do a morphologic study on cup to disc ratio that would do some type of reading of what it would be. You know, and, and basically then just do nerve only. Screen for glaucoma. Do a pressure, nerve, send it off. And yeah, well, you know, um, TLC at one point was going to do diabetic centers with, and, and age-related macular degenerative centers when they had, um, oh gosh, what was the product? I just forgot what the name of that was. Didn't go out. That they, they branched off. And, I mean, some kind of tool like this would be phenomenal. You know, and, and a lot of the retina guys, you know, our retina guys go right now 
to other centers and that's all they do is screen patients and see their post-ops or whatever